Hello everybody. Today we will start with the module 2 of the introduction to solidification processing courses. So, in module 2 uh, basically we will try to understand the principles of solidification and that uh, generally covers up nucleation in pure metals this is the one subtopic. Then in heterogeneous nucleation I'm, I have written separately because homogeneous nucleation will also be included in the nucleation in pure metals. Then growth of the pure metals and the simulation of the nucleation and growth we will try to show some demonstration how this uh, nucleation usually occurs in, in case of the uh, during the uh, solidification process of metallic materials. Then to some extent we will try to discuss about the solidification of the alloy and finally we look the very specific the eutectic solidification uh, of an binary alloy system. So, these are the basic cover up of the module 2 and uh, first thing we will start with the how nucleation occurs in case of the pure metals. So, uh, before doing that we need to understand that what are the uh, basically if you try to do some kind of the experiment or observation during the solidification what way the temperature changes with respect to time. Then we can refer the figure 1 first figure. Here you can see that it, it is showing simply the uh, time temperature profile of a particular. We start with the molten material and this thing suppose it is molten material this is the starting point and it is a definitely above the uh, solidification temperature and of course some superheat also there uh, in this molten material. So, first we have to extract the superheat uh, of this material. So, it will come uh, if in the, in the cooling phases when you start the cooling process then from the superheated molten material uh, from particular this state to it come reach this particular point. So, here the solidification starts at point A here. So, solidification starts at that particular temperature solidification temperature and here solidification ends. So, it consumes some finite time is required before the starting of the solidification and end of the solidification and during this period there is a change of the phase from liquid phase to solid phase and that actually happens in case of the pure metal one single point temperature. We know that the melting point temperature of the for pure metal there is a one, uh, one particular temperature, but if we compare with respect to the alloy system well alloy system that actually the melting there is no one fixed melting point temperature rather the melting or solidification occurs over a range of the temperature. But pure metal is the single point temperature. So, here melting point temperature is change of phase by releasing the latent heat and it reaches from the state A to state B and with some sudden this uh, time gap. Now, before A that uh, the superheat to reaching up to the point A this is, is the material is in liquid state. Between A and B it is a liquid and solid are in equilibrium. But once solidification ends at point B, then there is a complete change of the phase from liquid phase to solid phase. Now, further if we allow the cooling of the uh, component, then it is a cool down and reach to the ambient temperature. So, this is the this step, but uh, that this phase is basically the solid phase. Here you can see this is the solid phase, liquid and solid mixture equilibrium and this is the liquid phase. So, this is the typical time versus temperature history you can say or time versus temperature diagram associated with the pure metal. Now, you can we can observe that in case of pure metal also when there is a change of the different phases liquid solid and mixture of the solid and liquid phase this associated with some kind of the shrinkage. So, that is uh, when there is a shrinkage occurs it means that we try to represent this shrinkage in terms of the density. So, a x axis time and y axis is the density if we in case of the pure metal at a very initial stage that very molten material the shrinkage of the liquid when it is in completely liquid phase and gradually over the time there is a change of the uh, density that means the shrinkage of the liquid occurs from one point to other point shrinkage occurs. So, basically at the, uh, the here you can observe that at the liquid phase the density of the pure metal is the uh, it is a low density of the pure metal. Then when solidification occurs there is a gradually change phase from liquid phase to solid phase over this uh, period. 
then in that case the solidification uh, during that particular period and here you can see that there is a shrinkage occurs and there is a change of the this is the density of the liquid and here this point you can consider this is the density of the solid. So, change there is a drastic change in the from uh, the density when there is a change of the phase from liquid phase to solid phase. So, once we reach the solid phase then gradually with respect to time further uh, density that means when it is reaches the uh, further cooling occurs then density actually increases up to certain extent. But this the slope that means rate of increment it is in the solid phase and the liquid phase can be different. So, these are the typical um, time temperature diagram and density versus time that means how to take care of the shrinkage and basically the we can measure the density of a pure metal uh, with respect to time and over the you can say although we are telling this is the solidification complete solidification process, but the point to remember that solidification time is basically the time required between A and B and that actually represents the solidification time. So, definitely they will look, look, look into the comments also that pure metal solidify at constant temperature and during freezing latent heat of solidification is given off that means during this period the heat should be released then only it change the phase from liquid phase to solid phase and uh, most metals sink on solidification definitely the most maximum metals the during the solidification that means when change of the phase from liquid phase to sink phase it sinks and sink further as the solid cools to the room temperature. So, that is the typical uh, pattern of associated with the sinkage of time or in terms of the density with respect to time. Uh, here you can see uh, this diagram. This two diagram is very important to start with the solidification process. Now, we will come to this point. The what we can understand that solidification is the that nucleation occurs uh, uh, the st start uh, uh, nucleation means a very new phase occurs that means new solid phase occurs within the liquid and then gradually the solid phase actually grow and uh, further uh, or maybe in the within a particular uh, container all the liquid phase is gradually transformed to the uh, solid phase. Now, the new phase form definitely from liquid phase to solid phase when it is transformed the new phase form has different physical and chemical characteristics and different structure than the parent phase. So, parent phase means it is a in this case it is liquid phase and the different it definitely uh, physical and chemical characteristic must be different with respect to the parent phase. So, solidification we are talking the new or maybe in specific nucleation we are talking about the nucleation uh, occurs in here changing of the phase from liquid phase to solid phase, but at the same time nucleation may also occur when there is a transformation from one phase to another phase. So, both are solid phase that is also in that cases also the nucleation may also occur. So, overall solidification we can see that there is, is consists of the two stages one is the nucleation phase that means nucleation occurs and growth of the nucleation further. Now, what we understand by nucleation? Nucleation is basically it is the appearance of the very small particles forms in the that is normally we call the nuclei and of course, that is nuclei of the new phase. So, because initially it was the solid liquid metal converted to the nucleation occurs means it is a very small particles form in the solid phase that is why always we call as a new phase it, uh, it uh, appears in the form of a new phase. Now, this even nucleation also there is a some two different types of the nucleation usually that is called the homogeneous nucleation and heterogeneous nucleation we will discuss further about the homogeneous and nucle heterogeneous nucleation process uh, in this particular module. But simply understand that homogeneous nucleation means the nuclei of the new phase from uniformly from throughout the parent phase. So, it is a more or less uniform formation of the uh, uh, converted from liquid phase to solid phase in, in the structure that is we know as the homogeneous nucleation process and heterogeneous nucleation process it actually preferably at structural inhomogeneity. So, presence of the any kind of the foreign particles that actually initiate the nucleation process uh, in case of the heterogeneous nucleation and it is not may not form the uniformly throughout the structure. So, definitely in case of the heterogeneous nucleation we need some kind of the um, added particle that helps to start the nucleation process and of course, in this in this case the 
the energy or maybe energy barrier to uh, start the nucleation process is less in case of the heterogeneous nucleation process as compared to the homogeneous nucleation process. Now, we further go ahead with the uh, different uh, nucleation of the pure metals, uh, we, sim we try to in the simplest way we try to understand how it occurs. So, definitely during solidification the atomic arrangement actually changes from a random or short range order to a long range or to particular from a crystal structure it forms. So, if you observe in the last module we have discussed that the uh, short range order or long range order also. But in a simplest way, we understood the uh, nucleation or maybe during the solidification, the atomic arrangements actually changes the initially the liquid phase it is a more random way the atoms are placed and it is converted to the more uh, organized way in, the, in, in such a that long range order or it can create some kind of the crystal structure by placing the uh, proper placing of the atoms. Now, nucleation occurs. Uh, nucleation we can say that nucleation occurs very small nucleus begins to form in the liquid and then once the very nucleation so uh, the accumulation of the several atoms together and make a some uh, critical size of that and once this critical size reach then nucleation forms actually. So, definitely it needs some kind of the what can be the size of the critical size of the nucleus and that means uh, critical size of the cluster so that we can call this as a nuclear this, this actually nucleus uh, nucleation forms uh, that we try to explain the different way that will in terms of the Gibbs free energy we will try to explain <coughs> that what may be the critical size of the nuclear nucleus or critical size of the uh, particle so that we can call is as a uh, nucleus. But it if, the, if you look into so initially you can assume that there is a random arrangement of the atoms in the li liquid. So, then the formis formation of these things the arrangement of the atoms it will try to make a cluster. So, arrangement of the atoms make a cluster and when cluster make a change of the trend to change of the phase from liquid phase to solid phase. Then when, when converted from liquid phase to solid phase then it becomes more uh, regular way try to arrange the atoms. So, that is why from random arrangement to some regular arrangement it will try to follow that. Now, once you reach some arrangement in the uh, it is a very uh, some uh, cluster sufficient size of the cluster of course, it is uh, some favorable condition is required to maintain the uh, critical size of the cluster. So, once you reach these things then this cluster can appear in the form of a nucleus uh, having some finite size of the nucleation other than only one single atomic. Uh, size. Now, once it is done make a cluster and convert it to the uh, nucleus that means, it is a basically converting from liquid phase to solid phase and then this solid phase further grow and grow and makes, makes it bigger. And of course, all these cases we need some favorable conditions some favorable parameters is required such that nucleation should occur. Therefore, but in principle we can say like that the a balance between the free energy available from the driving force and the energy consumed in forming of the new interface. Definitely here when you try to make a interface and make a cluster and definitely it is as it creates a very new interface. So, new interface when it is creating it is uh, that uh, surface it is associated with the surface free energy because then it creates some kind of the uh, surface interface it is creating. And therefore, once the rate of the change of the free energy becomes negative, then embryo can grow. Embryo can grow once it is the, the rate of change of the free energy becomes negative that means, total free energy change becomes negative. So, here two types of the free energy is associated one is the volume free energy that means, associated with the size of the nucleus another is, since it is creating some new interface. So, that means, another uh, free energy uh, that is called the surface free energy both are attached. So, combining these two when total free energy changes becomes negative or there is a tends to becomes a negative then in that case we can say that this is the uh, uh, size of the uh, size of the uh, nucleus from that condition we can we can create we can create some kind of the conditions to define the size of the nucleus. So, two things are there one is the surface energy is associated since it is creating new interface another is the, the specified volume is there. So, volume free energy 
is also. So, combining these two we can calculate what is the free energy change during the nucleation process. Now, we come back to this thing uh, energy of the fusion uh, this we already discussed in the module 1, but I am just uh, again repeating here uh, to in continuation with this particular uh, solidification process. So, uh, delta G change of the Gibbs free energy associated to the delta H enthalpy change of enthalpy T delta S and delta is the entropy here change of the entropy. So, delta H close to the melting point temperature then delta H change of the enthalpy is basically latent heat and uh, L the latent heat and T is the variable and L is the let and delta S we can calculate also here the equilibrium melting point temperature here you can see this is the equilibrium melting point temperature and you, uh, this is the uh, uh, stable liquid phase uh, this side this is the uh, liquid phase stable liquid phase with respect to the melting point temperature and this is the stable solid phase. Now, if we draw the free energy curve, so G S this is for the solid phase, G L is the liquid phase. So, definitely G L is the lower in the towards the liquid phase uh, above the melting point temperature. So, therefore, liquid phase is more stable and uh, but in solid phase you can here you can see that that solid phase the Gibbs energy for the solid phase is lower as compared to the liquid phase. So, therefore, in that solid uh, in this particular zone the solid phase is more stable. But now, when you calculating the at a particular temperature which is away in the sorry, away from the melting point temperature T m here and then uh, this is the delta T uh, that is the degree of undercooling. So, delta T and the deviation melting point one particular temperature T at this particular point at, mel at temperature T what is the values of the delta G we are trying to estimate here. So, at temperature T the delta G uh, the equilibrium melting point T m the free energy of solid and liquid are equal therefore, at this point the change of the delta G will be 0 because free energy for the liquid and solid phase are same and they are in equilibrium condition at this particular point. So, with this the same equation you can apply here also delta G equal to delta H minus T delta S, but T corresponds to the melting point temperature close to the melting point temperature and here that equal to 0 that means change of the Gibbs energy also 0 from here we can find out at melting point temperature delta S equal to delta H by T m, but even also at melting point temperature delta H is equivalent to the latent heat L, L by T m. So, here delta H is known as the entropy of fusion. So, here close to the melting point temperature we can say that this is approximately we can calculate the delta S equal to L by T m and we, we can utilize this expression delta S equal to L by T m put it here. And from here you can see that T m minus T by T m. So, T m minus T the deviation from the melting point that is here graphically also we can see that is equivalent to the degree of undercooling. So, L approximately, but this is valid delta G is valid calculation of this thing approximately close to the melting point temperature. So, here L is the latent heat degree of undercooling and T m is the melting point temperature. So, delta G equal to L delta T by T m. Uh, we can we can calculate that. So, this calculation further we can we can utilize later on also to understand that uh, the nucleation in case of pure pure matter. But here we just we, we can introduce one particular term that is delta T that is the degree of undercooling associated with this particular solution or that particular uh, material. So, so actually is the degree of, uh, degree of undercooling here L delta T is uh, if you assume the latent heat and melting point temperature for a particular metal is for pure metal it is it is a fixed and defined properties. So, therefore, Gibbs free energy change is proportional to the delta T. So, change of the Gibbs free energy is basically depends on the delta T. So, delta T is larger means delta T is larger means delta G will be much more and delta T is low means the delta G will be much less. So, this degree of undercooling a degree of undercooling is extended in a particular solution and of course, it is a uh, the deviation from the melting point temperature. Uh, so, that actually uh, here also graphically you can see at this particular point delta G is much more larger undercooling and here also delta T is much less uh, because this indicates the delta G delta G is much less is the low amount of the degree of undercooling. So, this is the uh, 
See this degree of undercooling is the basically driving force for the homogeneous nucleation process. Now, we can state like this thing, we can analyze the homogeneous nucleation process in case of the pure metal. So, initially we can we can make a uh, the sample on the this volume uh, for the completely it is in liquid phase initially and here you can estimate the delta g equal to uh, delta g we already have shown the delta g change of the Gibbs energy l delta t by tm or other we can i have used the other notation delta g v volume free energy lv is the latent heat also here degree of undercooling delta t and melting point temperature now this is the initial phase before solidification and then we are assuming the solid particles form here they are having certain uh, dimension and that is the uh, within the liquid phase the liquid phase is in the parent phase and there the formation of the one solid particles. Now initially we can estimate what is the Gibbs free energy for the liquid phase G1, G1 equal to V s plus V l that means total volume of the solid phase of course here it is 0 and the liquid phase total volume into G V G V l. So, it is a volume free energy per unit volume actually G V l. So, the in the and that volume free energy associated with the liquid phase. So, therefore, G 1 we can calculate like that total Gibbs free energy at the state 1 or maybe initial state. Now, once it is formed the liquid uh, this one solid particles form then we can say the at state 2. So, it is state 1 we can say this is state 2. What is the total Gibbs free energy at state 2? At is that V s uh, the size of the uh, volume particle uh, 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 volume of the particle solid particle V s and G V s this uh, Gibbs free energy volume uh, Gibbs free energy for the solid phase per unit volume and V l the volume of the liquid phase and Gibbs free energy for the uh, liquid phase G V uh, l and this is the volume free energy here the gv is basically indicates the volume free energy now it creates once when there is a creation of the solid particles actually it creates on the interface here and the surface area of the interface is equal to say for example asl surface total uh, the surface area actually and this surface area we can say that 4 pi r square assuming the particle size r and volume of this particle is V s equal to 4 by 3 pi r cube. Now, a surface area and the gamma s l. So, surface energy uh, here also gamma s l indicates the surface energy. Now, therefore, these are the total free energy associated with this state 2 and this is total free energy G 1 is the total free energy associated with that state 1. Now, change of the Gibbs free energy delta G equal to G 2 by G 1. G 2 by G 1, G 2 equal to uh, this one we can this minus G 1 we can see that V s we can estimate the V s into G V s minus G V l and A s l gamma s l. Now, here for G V s minus G V l equal to minus of delta G V. So, change of the Gibbs free energy this two phase it is a minus delta G V irrespective of uh, this change of the Gibbs free energy because here I can see that delta in the uh, in this particular phase delta G V L is much more than that of the delta uh, sorry G V L is much more greater than G V S. So, therefore, difference between two we can consider as a minus this one minus delta G V into V s Gibbs free energy change and A s l gamma s l. So, therefore, total Gibbs free energy change for the formation of the uh, one uh, particle and then it is uh, then associated Gibbs free energy change we can calculate. Now, overall we can see that what is the this delta G v we can we delta G v minus is there and here V s V s is the size of the the solid particle V s equal to 4 by 3 pi r cube minus and here the surface area 4 pi r square into gamma s l. So, this is total Gibbs free energy change due to the formation of the one solid particles in the liquid phase just changing from the liquid phase to the solid phase. Therefore, you can see it is a particle size is r. Now, when r is smaller than certain critical value, 
So, therefore, increase in R leads to the an increase in delta G. So, uh, R is smaller than R, R starts some critical value. So, therefore, increase in R it basically leads to the increase in delta G. So, delta G value will increase up to certain point and that is also obvious from you can see this equation also. So, delta G. So, one is the negative quantity another is the positive uh, one is the basically uh, if you see the one is the positive increasing another is the negative. So, combining these two it is a can be something like that the total delta G change of the free energy change and uh, therefore, uh, in delta G is uh, uh, to an increase of delta G. So, therefore, it, it creates the unstable situation that means uh, not favorable situation to create some kind of may not the survive or may be not able to reach the critical size of the uh, nucleus uh, in this particular case. But when R is larger than R star, so R is more than R star in that case we can see that an increasing in R is basically further decrease in delta G. So, it becomes more stable situation because increasing R de delta G actually increase decreases. So, therefore, that actually creates more favorable condition uh, for the creation of the or sustainable uh, sustainability of this particular solid particles in during this using conversation from liquid to solid phase. Now, this way this we can explain like that. So, therefore, he this figure may be first we refer to this figure delta G change of the Gibbs free energy and R this is delta G and this is variation of the R. Here you can see this is the interfacial energy that means the positive quantity inter first one part was positive. So, proportional to the R square. So, this is increasing order and other uh, this is the increasing order this part and other part was the uh, it is a minus of 4 by 3 pi r cube delta G B this is a decreasing order. So, effective these two combining these two delta G will be something like that it is a gradually increasing reach some optimum point and then gradually decreasing value. So, therefore, this actually indicate delta G R as a particular radius delta G R equal to this is the expression. Now, if you are interested to know when there is a change of the slope that means delta G increase delta G's values increase in when it is in increasing order then that may not that will not create any kind of the uh, favorable condition to reach the critical size of the nucleus. So, critical size of the solid particle I can say like that, but uh, that is why if you try to like uh, find out that uh, some optimum point here. So, when there is a change of the slope at this particular point change of the slope mathematically that actually indicates some critical size when there is a change of the slope. So, that we can find out by simply performing the derivative d delta g by d r equal to 0. If you make it 0 then we are getting reaching this uh, expression 4 pi and 0 and but in this case r corresponds to r star. So, some critical value that is where the slope equal to 0. So, then 4 pi r star square delta g b plus 8 pi r star gamma equal to 0. So, gamma here we are representing gamma is the this uh, that uh, surface energy. Now, if we do from here we can calculate the what is the r star value critical size of the nucleus r star can be represented twice gamma s l by delta g v. Simply are performing the we are, we are trying to find out the uh, optimum point uh, of this particular uh, uh, expression. Now, r star becomes twice gamma s l by delta g v. So, therefore, this corresponding at this optimum 0 this corresponding r value is the r star in this case. Here, R star uh, gamma s l by delta G V, but delta G V we can we have already delta G V uh, free energy. We can calculate uh, that uh, if we remember that we have already calculated delta G L V delta T by T M it is associated with the, with the latent heat degree of under cooling and melting point temperature put this value and we are getting this is the expression for the uh, R star in terms of the uh, delta T and other parameters because this is the surface energy melting point temperature and this is the, the latent heat. Actually the surface energy uh, then melting point temperature and latent heat for a particular material is it is uh, almost fixed, 
but, but delta t can vary also depending upon the uh, nature of the solution. Now, from there also we can once we find out then we can find out delta g total free energy chain delta g star that means at r equal to r star we can calculate putting all this value r equal to r star value then delta g here, uh, here also you can find out delta you can putting r equal to r star value you can calculate the delta g star equal to 16 pi gamma slq by 3 delta g v square. So, from here delta g v we have calculated the this volume free energy put this value then we are placing in terms of that that gamma gamma that surface free energy melting point temperature and the latent heat and other term equal to 1 by delta t square. So, uh, this is the uh, degree of undercooling. So, once we this kind of the calculation and this indicates the critical size of the nucleus is that R star and that critical amount of the energy barrier for the uh, basically we are discussing the homogeneous nucleation process. So, critical energy barrier for the homogeneous nucleation is delta G star equal to this is the expression or this is this can can also be utilized this thing. So, here we can just try to analyze that the nucleation in the pure matter in case of the homogeneous nucleation is like that. If r equal to r is the variable, if r equal to less than r star, what will happen? If r equal to less than r star, it means that the unstable solid particles will form and which is known as the clusters or embryos. So, therefore, the system lowers its free energy by dissolution of the solid particles. It means that if uh, r particular cases if you create some uh, typical cluster size if r less than r star such that it is any in at any point r here this particular the r is less than r star and of course this also indicates some uh, cluster size so that means the cluster of the atoms this size and with some interface this thing but this nucleation will not survive and because this is further uh, the here you can see the free energy by dissolution of the solid again this uh, it, it is with the mixed with the uh, liquid phase. So, dissolution of the solid particles will occur if r less than r star. So, it will this nucleus will not survive actually it is a kind of the uh, probabilistic way we can estimate that not necessarily the all the um, uh, cluster will be the able to, able to grow or to reach the critical size. So, but one particular cluster size is basically cover up above the critical size then that nucleus will be able to that is the that that critical uh, size of the cluster will survive further and that critical size of the cluster is we known as the nucleus or, uh, or we can say the nucleation occurs in case of the pure metal. So, it is entirely depends on this thing and it is a probabilistic way, but it means that r the size is less than r star then that is not the stable solid particles, but if r greater than r star if it forms that will be we can say this is the, the stable solid particles and which is also referred to as the nuclei. In that case the free energy of the system because when definitely r greater than r star free energy of the system gradually decreases, but if r less than r star free energy actually in the uh, in the form of a it gradually increases. So, that may not be the that will not be possible to in the stable condition. Now, if r equal to r star then slope equal to 0 and this is the critical size of the nuclei and it is basically you can say that unstable equilibrium with the surrounding liquid. So, till it is a some kind of the probabilistic because there is a further reduction of the Gibbs free energy is possible even it is more than r greater than r star. Now, at critical radius the solid particle is at equilibrium definitely the solid particle is equilibrium at the at the critical size with the surrounding. So, therefore, solid sphere and the liquid have the same free energy in this case the solid sphere and the liquid sphere having the same free energy. So, therefore, we can say the delta G V equal to and twice gamma S L by R star because when uh, at this point when it, they are in the critical size equilibrium if you see the the at melting point temperature or maybe at this particular when there is a H the liquid phase and solid phase are in equilibrium at this particular point. So, therefore, give free energy uh, between the of the solid and uh, liquid having the uh, they, they should have ha same amount of the free energy I am talking about the volume free energy of course, uh, surface free energy will come into the picture once 
it will create some kind of the new interface then surface plane will come into the picture. So, that is why I make the comment like that delta g equal to gamma sl by r star and that is equivalent to once at r equal to uh, r star and when the solid and liquid are in equilibrium with the surrounding uh, uh, liquid. Now, nucleus in pure metals, but we are trying to understand the effect of the uh, undercooling. Now, effect of the undercooling here you can see we just uh, just to before looking into the image we can see th we can say that this expression is for the uh, that when delta g change of the free energy equal to 0 slope equal to 0 uh, delta or delta g with respect to r equal to 0 and we can reach this equation particular expression or particular uh, um, r star making them equal and then we will get the from here we can find out the r star in terms of the other parameters. So, here r star is like that r star is gamma sl delta g v and if you put the roughly calculate the free energy change uh, uh, volume free energy delta g v uh, when solid and liquid are in equilibrium then we can uh, we can calculate this thing we have already calculated l delta t by uh, um, t m. So, from there uh, sorry uh, l uh, this delta g equal to basically gamma free surface t m and del L the ratio of that the indicates the delta G we put this value we can get this expression. Now, here you can say that R star into delta T we are assuming these are the variable R star and delta T equal to and these are the properties metric to some extent the material properties uh, for a pure metal. So, it is a constant like that we can say. Now, here you can see that r star into delta t is remain uh, here constant. Now, uh, so x axis is the r and y axis equal to delta t. So, here r a uh, critical not r exactly r star critical radius of the particle and here is the delta t degree of undercooling. So, therefore, this equation of the hyperbola we can plot like that this equation. So, basically x y equal to constant. So, that uh, we are plotting here and we are marking this two different zone. This side is the nuclei are stable in this zone because in uh, stable in this zone because this is the above uh, uh, there is a there is a two things are there it is a nucleation size is above the critical size r star and second delta g uh, change of the Gibbs energy gradually becomes negative uh, in, in this particular uh, that size the, this side. So, therefore, we can say nuclei are stable in this particular zone nucleus is stable form, but in other zone this side with the highlighted zone that is the uh, embryos from this region and the may dissolve also. So, we can say that here the nuclei are not stable until because they are not reaching exactly the critical size or in that zone the delta g also change of the Gibbs energy also positive here. So, uh, gradually increasing so that is positive. So, therefore, these are the in that particular zone the nucleus nuclei are not stable and also we similar we can estimate a delta g star also we can see this has a more or less constant term and it actually proportional to the delta g star is also proportional to the 1 by delta t. So, degree of undercooling. So, basically we can say that so delta t actually increases then uh, delta g further decreases much delta g star further decreases. So, one particular system in the availability of the degree of undercooling is much more in that case the variation that means the to start the nucleation process specifically I am talking about homogeneous nucleation process in that case the requirement of the free energy change will be less. So, that means, so uh, in that case the energy barrier will be less and if the degree of undercooling is much more. So, so everywhere we can see that in the homogeneous nucleation process we are, we are trying to relate in terms of the uh, degree of undercooling. So, we can say that degree of undercooling is the main driving force in case of the homogeneous nucleation process. Similarly, it is also true in case of but R star is basically proportional to 1 by delta t also. So, delta t increases then r star can be decreases. So, it means that even very smaller size of the nucleus can be stable if the degree of undercooling available in this particular solution is much more in case of the homogeneous solution a homogeneous uh, nucleation process. For the discussion now if you observe that 
uh, we can calculate the optimum point also here the uh, at this particular this is the optimum point we are talking about and we can say that we are reaching the critical size of the nucleus and we can say this is the amount of the minimum amount of the energy barrier required to start the nucleation process. But if we further decreasing this value once upon particular point when R becomes 0 here this particular point further decrement of the Gibbs free energy and here delta G change of the free energy change equal to 0 uh, sorry uh, not R equal to 0 but free of energy change equal to 0 delta G equal to 0 at R equal to some value so we can say the R 0. So, which is more than that of the critical size of the nucleus. So, therefore, in this particular beyond R star delta G R decreases with increasing R and R equal to ultra delta G star equal to 0 delta G R equal to 0. So, from this condition delta G R equal to 0 you can find out R 0 equal to the size of the that uh, while delta G R equal to 0 then R 0 equal to 3, 3 into gamma S L by delta G V. So, therefore, in this case we can say that which is this expression is different this expression is different from the critical size of the nucleus we remember and we are following the graphically also R star is different and R 0 are the different. So, therefore, when the particle size is grows to R 0 so we are assuming up to R 0 then means from beyond uh, more than R 0 value in that case the Gibbs free energy change delta G should is negative value. So, therefore, in that particular when R equal to R 0 the energy barrier nucleation barrier decreases to 0 hello. But however, delta G R is not the minimum in this particular case it means that nucleation is presumed to nucleation will assume to continue till delta G R becomes negative. So, that means below R 0 value and this condition is thermodynamically more favorable conditions and, and this helps to explain that where there is a continuation further continuous of the nucleation process until delta G R becomes negative. So, overall if we see that delta G R actually increases rapidly initially very rapidly delta G R increases reaching the optimum point and initially that is mainly dominated by the more surface free energy increase in the surface energy because formation of the interface and uh, and uh, in, in that cases and more, uh, we can see that uh, that mostly dominated by the uh, surface energy for the initial phase when delta G R increases initially very rapidly. Therefore, continuous nucleation or particle growth is not very thermodynamically favorable at the initial stage of the nucleation process and the particle may dissolve in the liquid phase that already explained this thing the particle may, the, uh, may dissolve uh, to the liquid phase because uh, in before reaching the critical value. So, uh, what we can explain this phenomena is like that maybe the a very initial stage there is a new formation of the interface. So, when there is a no interface, so interfacial energy we are not uh, assuming, but when you start forming the interface then there is a rapidly uh, increment of the delta uh, that free uh, surface free, uh, surface energy is rapidly increasing initial stage. So, that when there is a surface uh, energy is rapidly increasing then to uh, subside this amount there is may not be the that much of the Gibbs free energy volume free energy will not change that much of drastically. So, therefore, initial phase is more dominating for by the surface free energy and that is the if you can see the from graphically it is very positive value. Therefore, that in that case it is not a thermodynamically favorable condition. So, particle may not uh, survive before reaching the uh, critical value. Now, once the particle reaches the critical size therefore, and pass the energy barrier then we can say the further growth, growth of the particles will lead further you can see further growth of the particle that actually leads to further decreasing of the Gibbs free energy change. So, therefore, that further decrease of the Gibbs free energy it is basically we can say that it tendency to reach the favorable condition for continuous solidification. So, con continuous solidification to occurs and uh, that indicates the favorable condition to reach because it is gradually from negative slope is there, but it gradually decreases to the 0. However, until free energy is negative we cannot say that uh, it is not thermodynamically stable until it is not re reaching the negative value it is not very thermodynamically stable conditions. Now, we can explain this thing whether it is uh, critical size, but no why we are talking about the kinetics. So, therefore, how many particles is basically forms the 
critical size of the nucleus. So, how many atoms are included to make a one nucleus and that we are not talking about and uh, we are talking about the we can just how many, uh, but if we calculate the how many particles can pass over the critical energy barrier. So, that means critical energy barrier is required delta G star, but to delta G star and accordingly there is a critical size of the nucleus, but within the critical size of the nucleus how many atoms are there and uh, that actually indicates the kinetics of the nucleation. So, now we will try to understand the kinetics of the nucleation process here. So, nucleation in pure metal and definitely degree of undercooling we try to understand uh, this first. Now, here you can see that uh, critical size of the of an uh, embryo to become a nucleus or some, uh, some uh, clusters of atoms to become a nucleus is estimated we have already done. However, the rate at which the nuclear will appear in the system is basically not known from this equation or analysis we may not know how many nuclei will appear in the particular system. Now, nucleation rate actually depends on the population density of the cluster of the critical size and the rate at which such cluster are formed. So, therefore, these two parts it depends on that these two components. Now, the concentration of the critical uh, uh, embryos can be estimated like that n r equal to n 0 e to the power minus de delta g r by k t. So, delta k is the Boltzmann's constant n 0 is the total number of atoms within particular system and delta g r is the excess free energy associated with the cluster. So, you suppose there is a making of the certain cluster. So, therefore, this cluster this free energy delta gr is basically free energy of size delta gr is the free energy of this cluster having size r. Now, uh, here you can see that uh, that we are plotting here the r star in and delta g you can see the critical size if the large amount of the degree of undercooling is available then critical size of the nucleus is less, but degree of undercooling is very low, then critical size of the nucleus is very large. So, uh, in that case this thing very large and here in this case critical and here. So, therefore, that from this figure we can we can uh, say like that. But here you can see uh, there is a uh, possibility is there that R max is the maximum size of the uh, nucleus uh, um, that uh, some particular size uh, we can see that degree of uh, see that delta G now if it is uh, delta G V is basically in if delta G V is increasing that means uh, it is delta G V we can see that L just look into this L delta T by T m. So, therefore, if in the solid phase when the delta G V and the it depends on the L delta T by T m, if delta G V is actually increasing in the uh, if somehow if the if with the if increasing of the delta T, then delta G V is actually increasing. When delta G V is increasing, then total it is a negative quantity. So, this negative so delta G will be decreasing. So, therefore, that probability of the delta G V when is decreasing the probability of the uh, a smaller size of the nucleus will, will may sustain if there is a large amount of the delta T is available within the system, but it can reach some ki kind of the uh, critical uh, some uh, size maximum size it can reach. So, therefore, R max size is the basically that maximum size is available that actually in to some extent it is uh, connected to the probability of the particular size of the uh, nucleus, uh, particular size of the cluster we can say that will able to survive uh, during this nucleation process. So, therefore, here R star we can see that uh, R star and when crossing the critical size this corresponding values of the delta T n. So, therefore, this particular uh, 
degree of undercooling is required the degree of undercooling in the uh, this delta T n when the R star is crossing uh, this 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 line. So, this is the corresponding amount of the degree of undercooling as a um, it corresponds to the maximum size of the cluster which is having high probability to be sustainable during this uh, process uh, during the uh, nucleation process. So, therefore, we can see this concentration of the cluster to reach the critical size is basically calculated the C star equal to C 0 e to the power delta G by K T. So, this indicates the number of nuclei per unit volume C star and here you can see that the homogeneous nucleation process uh, this that there is a delta T in is very very drastic change. It is highly sensitive with respect to this thing. This small change in the delta T n the rate of the homogeneous nucleation is much more. So, the addition of the one or more atoms to reach this cluster convert to into the stable nuclear with a frequency f. For example, suppose a critical size now addition of the here the critical certain size of the nuclei now addition of the one atoms to this size. So, this increases the size of the critic uh, increases the size of the, the cluster. So, once the addition of the one or more atoms to reach the clusters and that actually converted to the stable nuclei with a particular frequency of f. So, this is we represent in the particular frequency how many atoms are adding to reach this two into the stable nuclei form. So, that frequency of f then we can say that uh, homogeneous nucleation rate of the homogeneous nucleation uh, is the multiply by the f into C 0 e to the power minus delta G by homogeneous. So, this is the delta G the energy barrier for the homogeneous nucleation process delta G star and K t is the temp at particular temperature t and K is the uh, Boltzmann's constant. So, therefore, simply we are adding we can say the rate of the homogeneous nucleation in the free in terms just multiplying by the frequency we can say this is the nuclei or unit volume this is the uh, rate we can calculate. So, this homogeneous nucleation process also rate of the homogeneous nucleation process can also be calculated like that f c 0 e to the power minus a by delta t that means, uh, this a can be some constant terms uh, in terms of the if say surface energy melting point k particular temperature and latent heat. So, uh, this uh, particular temperature and this a by delta t square here you can see that in other way we can see the rate of the homogeneous nucleation we can represent, but it is a basically uh, depends on the C 0 and the degree of uh, this delta t also and again it depends on the what is the amount of the degree of undercooling. So, uh, uh, this space and um, that is the nuclei per unit volume. So, this is the rate of the homogeneous nucleation we can express and here you can see that uh, homogeneous nucleation process with respect to the delta T n the critical values of degree of undercooling delta T n uh, that actually very much sensitive. So, rate of homogeneous nucleation is very highly sensitive uh, with respect to the delta T n. So, small change in the delta T n homogeneous nucleus rate increases very rapidly. So, therefore, the effect of the undercooling of the nucleation rate is very drastic that we observe from here. So, there because of the nonlinear relation between the two quad quantities as shown in the plot. So, in the shown in the where also we can shown in the plot this is a very drastic change of the degree of effect of the degree of undercooling on the nucleation rate in case of the homogeneous nucleation process. Now, if we try to understand that homogeneous nucleation process we are assuming it is a liquid phase and that throughout this structure the homogeneous nucleation starts at the different points and here the driving force is the degree of undercooling. But if we look into the heterogeneous nucleation process here uh, you can see that uh, delta G star equal to this value. Now, if you see degree of undercooling for a particular nucleation process material may be uh, limited up to certain extent or more or less uh, very well defined in certain cases that means quantity can be go up to certain extent for a particular solution. Therefore, the other way to decrease the Gibbs free energy interfacial uh, Gibbs free energy. So, total critical am amount of the energy can decrease can be decreased if because there is a one part is there surface free energy gamma S L because it and delta G star is proportional to the gamma S L cube.
So, it is a surface energy, interfacial surface energy depends on this thing proportional to this thing. So, therefore, to facilitate the nucleation process, nucleation process means that if you try to reduce the requirement of the mini, uh, uh, energy barrier to start the nucleation process is less. So, that is possibility is there, one possibility is there the interfacial energy can be reduced. If it is possible to interfacial energy can be reduced in the nucleation process, then total energy bar barrier to start the nucleation process will be less. So, that is the principle to understand the heterogeneous nucleation process. So, here heterogeneous nucleation process is normal actually occurs one some nucleating agent pre existing agent in the solution that actually start the nucleation process. So, therefore, if some nucleating agent is there and there is a interaction of the solid particles forms. So, I can say the nucleus form here this way and over the liquid phase. So, this is a liquid phase is there this is the solid phase nucleus and it is but solid phase nucleation occurs over the some nucleating agent. So, once it is covering the over the nucleating agent actually the energy barrier for the will be much less in this cases. For example, when you try to explain the homogeneous nucleation process we are assuming this is the domain liquid domain and from there, there it creates complete interface spherical interface it will creating and then that kind of the energy barrier is required to overcome in this case delta G star is much more to create the complete the spherical particle interface and uh, this uh, such that that is why the, uh, the if we count the total uh, interface in interfacial energy along with the volume free energy it in this case interfacial energy is much more and that amount of the energy is required to start the nucleation process in case of the homogeneous nucleation process. So, but here we are not creating the complete because some nucleating agent is pre existing agent is there. So, it is not required to create some kind of the complete inter complete spherical inter uh, spherical surface and corresponding the interface uh, um, uh, the interfacial energy associated with the uh, spherical surface rather the part of the sp sphere or spherical surface it will be it, it, it is creating. So, therefore, it is accounting less amount of the interfacial energy as compared to the homogeneous nucleation process and that is the basic differences in case of the heterogeneous nucleation process as compared to the homogeneous nucleation process. Okay. So, I think um, uh, this ne uh, next time I mean maybe next class we will try to discuss the different aspect of the heterogeneous nucleation process that means I, I am talking about the, the derivation and what we can estimate the Gibbs energy and critical size of the uh, nucleus in case of the heterogeneous nucleation process. I think that is all for today. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.